Hello everyone, welcome to my channel about writing stuff. My name is Camille and today we are going off script a little bit to talk about mental illness and creating things. Uh, so who out there has a mental illness? I hope it's not just me. Anyway, I initially started these videos because, you know, I want, I want to be in this world of writers and artists and creators and I want to eventually one day you know once once I get published I want to be able to do conventions and book signings and all these sort of things without freaking out and going into full-blown panic mode. Um, for those of you who don't know I have a uh, diagnosed anxiety disorder plus I have um, panic episodes I go into like full-blown panic. Um, I'm also uh, very obsessive and I have a lot of up and down periods. Um, it's not bipolar. I've heard some people call it psychothalmia, but personally I just believe that it's hormones influencing my mood to the point where I get uh, very frenzied, not exactly manic, but I get those really high frenzied points and then I dip down into a very low depression. So that's me. Hi. Um, so I started these videos to really push myself and to step out of my comfort zone to practice articulating my thoughts and public speaking and things like this. Um, you know, it's I don't really know if this is me or my mental illness, but I go through phases where my mind is very muddled. There is a lot of shit going on up there and they do not play well together. And I get in states where I get very confused and sort of bogged down with, with all the stuff running around inside my head. So that's why I started doing these videos, you know, also to hopefully get a following um, for when I get published and, and stuff for my writing. But it's, it's mostly for me. This is very personal for me. Also, this idea of helping other writers, this stuff is very personal. The reason why I haven't done this mental illness for creatives video yet, however, is because I have really bad anxiety and it just doesn't sound like a good idea. But um, I'm in a place now in um, my wellness, I guess, that I, I feel a little bit more comfortable sort of digging into this topic. I might do more videos on this depending how people react to the content, but um, so here we go. If you have a mental illness, maybe you have really bad anxiety or depression or bipolar disorder, um, I'm just going to go through a few things to sort of give you a pep talk, but also I'm going to try and give you guys tips on how to work through your mental illness in the realm of, of doing your writing or doing your art or doing your music, whatever it is that, that you love. Um, because it is really hard to get work done when you're low, low depressed. It's really hard to get work done when you're manic because you're all over the place. And it's really hard to get work done when you are in this constant state of worry or panic. So that's just what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, no specific writing tips. Um, this week, but I'll be back with those next week. So there's still a big stigma around mental illness. People can't see it, so they think that it's fake, even though most mental illnesses present in very physical symptoms. Um, for me, you know, my um, all of my shit that's wrong with me is is chemical. My synapses and stuff don't shoot off right. Um, so, you know, I was, I was born this way and, you know, even though it's a mental illness, I had tells throughout my childhood, you know, it's, I would scratch my skin. Um, I would lick my lips so obsessively that my whole chin would be like red and scabbed over. I would pull out my hair, um, things like this. And a lot of this mental illness stuff, you know, if you're talking about like ADD and ADHD, that stuff can manifest when you're very young, but things like panic disorder and anxiety and depression really do progress and get worse 
in your teen years and in your young adult years. Your brain, uh, I think, doesn't stop developing until you're like 26. So I'm 24 now and, um, you know, all of, all of this sort of anxiety baggage that I've been carrying has finally started to settle. And there have been a, plenty of studies saying that, you know, people with mental illness do die from like physical things. Like people with anxiety have a higher chance of dying from heart attacks and cancer and, and all of this stuff. So it is, you know, there's still stigma, stigma attached to mental illness, but it is very real and it does present and affect people both mentally and physically. So if you're in a situation where people are really just disregarding what you have to say, fuck those guys. Like, if you have a mental illness, it is real. It's just, you need to try and be in a place where you handle your mental illness and not the other way around. And the way that we do this, the way that we really handle all the shit that's going on in our head is to first pick up the signs that you have. Now this sounds kind of, I guess, um, up in the air and flighty, but hear me out. So for me, I think it's a little bit easier as women um, or as a woman with a mental illness because my mood changes as the month progresses. It's definitely a hormone influenced thing. So my anxiety and issues are very much on a schedule. You know, at one part of the month, I get really low, depressed, and then I start climbing back up again until I get really frenzied, and then I drop back down into this low, morbid depression mode. And I know sort of where I'm headed because I know where I've been. If I just had a really peak day where I'm just scattered and all over the place, then I know that I'll start descending soon, and in about a week and a half, I'll drop down into full depression. So that's the first thing you do. You need to keep an eye out for your tells. Be able to pick up on, you know, when you're going to have a bad day or when you're going to have a frenzied day or what you need. And you need to be able to articulate this to the people that you love, the people that are in your life. Um, you know, my husband is mentally sound as a drum. He doesn't have any of the crap I have, but I can go to him and say, you know, I'm having a bad day. And he understands that that means I need to lay on the couch in my pajamas and not do anything. And that, you know, he can just listen to me complain and understand that it's, it's not really me. It's, it's the depression speaking. So those are the first two things. Be able to understand how your mental illness works. That way you can get ahead of it. And then be able to articulate to the people that you love the things that you need. But don't be selfish about it either. You know, the people in your life need things too, whether they have a mental illness or not. <clears throat> so the next thing is, um, for me in my path, um, about a year ago, I had my first panic attack, which was really terrible. It was like in the middle of cooking dinner. And I had to sit down because I couldn't breathe and my chest just like really bad, shaking, all of that. So um, I went to the doctor. They said, oh, you didn't have a heart attack. You had a panic attack. So then I started therapy. The thing about therapy is like everyone should, should go to therapy. Like whether they have issues or not, like whether you are the most uh, just down to earth, sound human being in the world, you'd probably still go to therapy. You know, that's like a cure-all for anything. Well, not a cure-all, but it's, it's great for anyone. If you are in a place where you're really struggling with your mental illness, and you know, even if you're in a place where you understand how your mental illness works, and you are just very self-aware and you can articulate these things, therapy is still good. It's good to be able to work through all of the things circling in your head with someone who is unbiased and is not emotionally attached to you. So that's a big suggestion for everybody. Just freaking go to therapy. It is, it is good stuff. Um, 
But even when we go to therapy, especially, um, you know, when you do have sort of that chemical imbalance or your brain just doesn't work right, um, you know, what, what do you do when you're depressed and you need to get work done? And this is a big thing for me because, you know, I'm, I'm also very obsessive. And like I said, I was born this way. So I've always had this idea in my head that, you know, where, where do I end and my mental illness begins? When you um, sort of exist in this for most of your life or for a big chunk of your life, it's really hard to tell what part is you and what part is the mental illness. And, you know, I hated feeling low and depressed and I hated being scattered and frenzied and all over the place. And yet, I had this feeling that you know, if I took steps to get better, that I would I would lose this obsessive nature that I have that drives me to get work done. I feared that I would lose this sort of introverted nature in myself that causes me to stay home and drives me to get work done. Because that's my big goal, you know, is I want to write stories and do art and do all these things. And, you know, even with my mental illness, I was able to write four books in less than two years and six short stories. And I was afraid that my mental illness was the piece of me driving this sort of need that I had to, to be this person to achieve these things. But that's not true. That is completely untrue. I was listening to um, sort of a Google Hangout with... Um, Patrick Rothfuss, and one of the hosts from um, Mabim Bam, My Brother, My Brother, and Me. And uh, one of the other people talking, her name was Thera, and she said that she has depression, and she started medication. And what the medication does is it makes you more you. And that, and this was um, a while ago that I, I listened to this Google Hangout, and that idea of this medication makes you you makes you makes more you freak me the fuck out because <laughs> if we were going to make me more me, then I'm just going to be more panicky, more obsessive, more depressed, more frenzied. And that's where this idea of where is the line comes from. It's, you know, am I my mental illness? No, I'm not. So... What do we do when we are um, really, really depressed and can't get any work done? Well, here's what I do. At least this is what I have done in the past. You know, I work a day job, which kind of sucks. I don't, <laughs> I don't particularly love my day job. You know, it's not a career that I want. The career that I want is in the arts. So for a long time, I, it was the stick. You know, if I don't get this work done, if I don't achieve my next goal that I've set for myself, then I'm going to be stuck in this menial job forever and never ascend to the place that I want to be in, which is a terrible feeling. Um, but that's how it is. So, and it's, um, so yeah, so that, that's the big thing is I need to get some sort of work done, even when I'm having a really low day. I need to get some work done. So what I do is I get home from my day job, I put on sweats, I get either some wine or a beer or whatever, and it, it could be like two in the afternoon, who cares? I'm home, I'm not going anywhere, whatever. Uh, I get snacks, um, I put on some sort of focus music, and then I pick something to do that doesn't sound awful. Because... <laughs> That's kind of how my brain works. You know, when I'm really depressed, I don't want to do anything. But some things sound worse to do than others. For example, when I'm having a really low lethargic day, the idea of pulling out a canvas and painting and just, oh my god, sucks. It sounds horrible. The idea of using my brain to start drafting or to continue drafting a novel sounds horrible. But maybe doing a thumbnail sketch sounds okay. Or doing some world building sounds okay. 
or researching uh, some agents sounds okay. And that comes back around to knowing yourself and knowing how you work. The main thing is to get some work done. You know, maybe it's not um, the big project that you had planned on working on that day, but it is something. And once you get in the habit of working through your low and your high periods, it just becomes normal. It becomes, you know, I can't take a day off. I never take a day off. Like I can do this. I've done this before kind of an idea. However, there are some days where you may just be so low that you need to, you need to take a nap. You, you need to just lay around all day and do nothing and cry for no reason and all of this stuff. It really comes down to how you work. And I've also noticed that, um, you know, my timing is very skewed. It's this idea of if I take one full day off of, of doing any work, off of writing or doing art, then I feel like I haven't done anything in weeks. And it is just this horrible idea. So um, keep a calendar, that's always good too. And actually mark what you do on each day. That way when you get really depressed or really frenzied or you know your anxiety is so bad that you can't get anything done, you have a log of stuff that you have achieved, even if it's little things. That, that's, that gives me a good boost, is knowing that I at least did something, that I didn't waste a full day. And the last thing, you know, I, <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of cheating doing this video now because for the past about month and a half, I have been on medication. Disclaimer, medication does not work for everybody. There's a huge stigma attached to medication because everyone's brain works differently. Um, you know, and this is a good analogy to, to your story brain. You know, it's everyone's story brain works differently. That's why everyone's books are so different. Same thing with mental illness. Everyone's mental illness or illness in general is different from person to person because people are different. Um, people's brains are different. So this is not at all a, hey, you should get medicated video. This is a, hey, you should get therapy and start looking inward and try to figure out how you work um, video. But, you know, I was in therapy for eight months and I got to a point where I was, and I, I avidly did not want medication before um, going into therapy. But I finally got to such a low point um, I had had a number of consecutive panic attacks, which uh, tightened my muscles and my neck and shoulders and compressed my airway to the point where I couldn't breathe. And then I would think, my God, I can't breathe, which would kick up my anxiety, which made the not being able to breathe worse. And then I was just really low and depressed and I couldn't focus because I was getting headaches because I couldn't breathe. Just all bad. <laughs> so finally, I went to my therapist and I was like, done. I can't do this anymore. This is awful. I'm always tired. I can't breathe. I have headaches. I can't get any work done. I am so depressed and worthless and down and I just, it was a horrible feeling. So finally my therapist said, well, why don't you go see your primary doctor and just ask about it? So I did. I went to my primary, blah, 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 blah. You know, a few days later, I have a prescription for anti-anxiety and depression meds. Started freaking out at the idea of taking them, but, you know, I thought it would be traumatic taking this medication. But, you know, having panic attacks and not being able to breathe or think, that shit's fucking traumatic too. So, um, so yeah, now, a month and a half later, on the medication, and... Here's the thing about medication. It's not that it makes you more of who you are. What it does is it takes away all those barriers that block you. Getting really low and depressed and not being able to get any work done, that's a barrier. That shit goes away. Being way too frenzied and scattered brained and not being able to focus, that's a barrier and that shit goes away. Worrying or over-obsessing about, 
you know, that, that chapter that you wrote or that scene or just the word choice and all the stuff that you really just can't fix because it is as good as you're going to get at that point. That's a barrier. That shit goes away. Um, st not being able to sleep at night because you're worrying about, you know, that chapter you wrote earlier that day or that submission you sent out or that agent who has your manuscript. Those are barriers. Th that's a barrier to your health. You know, overthinking things at night and not being able to sleep. That shit goes away. So, if you are the type of person who, you know, you have, you already have good insight into your mental illness and how you work, and you're really trying to fight these things, and you've been in therapy for a while, but it's just not working out, and maybe shit's getting worse, or you just aren't feeling it, um, try medication. If you're like me, and you have really bad anxiety, you know, I was like, okay, it takes a few days to get in your system, so I'm going to take the first pill on a Friday, try the drugs over the weekend, see how I do, make sure I can still function and drive, plus my husband stayed home with me. That's a big thing. Get someone to be with you. Plan a few days off of work to try these things out. Um, I was lucky in the sense that the first meds that I tried worked out very well and were very beneficial to me, but you might be different. You might need to go through a couple. But, um, you know, I, I really recommend trying out therapy and really with your therapist talking through, you know, any, any ups and downs you have or any instances of panic that you experience or any instances of OCD or irritation and start putting these things on a timeline. That way you can see how you go up and down and then you know treat yourself and be open about these things there is nothing to be ashamed of having a mental illness you know i told you about my husband earlier i straight up tell him i'm having a bad day like i'm not gonna be any fun i might cook dinner and it'll probably be shitty or we can order a pizza it's being open and being honest about what you need it's like if someone calls and they want to go out but you just are not feeling it, tell them, can't go out today, I'm just, I'm having a bad day. Um, or splurge, you know, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's a beer and some cherries, um, you know, pillows and blankets on the couch with my laptop. I can get stuff done when I'm really depressed. If I have a beer, a glass of wine, some cherries, some pillows, blankets, and my laptop. And it's really just figuring out how you work. I say that all the time. It doesn't matter if <laughs> doesn't matter if you're building characters or a world or getting to know yourself. You need to know these things to be able to approach it from a productive standpoint and really change things for the better. Okay, that's all I have for you guys. Um, you know. Like I said, I might do more videos on this depending on how you all take the content. Um, but I'm around, so if you have any personal questions about whatever's going on with you, please comment below or you can tweet me at Camille A. Singer because I'm always around. Um, and yeah, a resource I'm going to link that hangout um, with, with Patrick Rothfuss and the Thera, and I forget the guy's name from my brother, my brother, and me. Um, but yeah, it's a great, like, two-hour-long hangout discussion about mental illness and being a creative type. Um, it's good, good listening stuff, so I'll link that below. Uh, next week, we'll talk about something less grim and terrible. But for now, as always, you should be writing stuff.